This is the story of a hero. It's a story Alison Gray grew up with. It's the story of a quiet, unassuming family man who did his duty. If he hadn't done what he did that night, I don't think people would have survived. Arthur Rostron was captain of the Carpathia at the Cunard Line. Shortly after midnight on the 15th of April, the ship's wireless operator, Harold Cottam, was preparing to go to bed. He was untying his shoelaces while wearing his headset when he picked up a distress call from the Titanic. We've struck ice. Come at once. Speaking in 1957, Harold Cottam told the BBC what happened next. I knocked on the captain's cabin and as I saw a light, I rushed in. And he said, uh, who the hell, or words to that effect. And so I said, well, uh, the, the Titanic struck ice, sir, and she's in distress. I've got the position here. Uh, so he said, well, give it to me, and he put a dressing gown on and went. The Carpathia wasn't the closest ship. She was nearly 60 miles away. Arthur Ostron turned her around and set off at full speed into those treacherous icy waters. Without hesitation, Captain Rostron ordered doctors to ready supplies of stimulants, restoratives and other necessities. Hot drinks, dry clothes and blankets were made available and canvas ash bags were placed near the gangways to haul up children and the injured. An extra watch went to work in the engine room, many without waiting to dress, because they knew that speed was of the essence. The Carpathia arrived just under two hours after Titanic sank. More than 700 people were rescued. Tremendously proud. I mean, not many people can look back in history and sort of have a member of the family that they can say, you know, has, has done this feat. And he also said that it, it wasn't me, it was the hand of God that was um, guiding me that night. Because he was a, a religious man as well. Captain Rostrum was showered with awards. He received the Congressional Medal from the US President, the French Légion d'honneur, and he was knighted. Sir Arthur Rostron retired in 1931 and he lived in this house in West End near Southampton. But he took a little bit of the sea with him. Follow me. He's left various marks on it, um, principally this uh, bay window that we're in, which wasn't original to the house. I understand that he had it built in, uh, in the hope of making it feel like the bridge of one of his ships. And if we look out the window, we can see that uh, there's a sort of prow of a ship and, uh, uh, and the garden rolls away rather like rolling waves. Stephen Johnson bought this house because it belonged to Sir Arthur Rostron. Next week, it'll get a blue plaque. Do you almost feel the ghost of, of Arthur Rostron in the house? Sometimes, especially in this room, which I suspect is fairly well un unaltered since his time, um, I like to feel that he's, uh, he's looking down on us sometimes. Sir Arthur Rostron died of pneumonia in 1940. His grave is still tended, and the West End Historical Society pays tribute to his courage in its museum. We're very proud that he actually chose. He chose to live in West End, and that makes all the difference. He chose us. <laughs> now, people travel from all over the world to visit this little museum that's only open on a Saturday. It's quite fitting, really, that Captain Rostron's memory is being kept alive in what was the old fire station. The crews based in this building saved countless lives over the years, and now it tells the story of one of the most courageous rescues in history.